Hello, grade six. The new chapter talks about energy and the way it's transferred uh, around in the universe. Now, the previous chapter, we talked about forces. Forces cause objects to change position or shape. You cannot see force per se, but you can definitely feel its effect. Now, when a force is applied on an object and it changes its position, we say work has been done or something, an action has taken place, something changed that made you realize that this object actually had force on him. But to allow an object to do work, energy must be added. Now, what is energy? Well, it's something you add to an object to be able it to change. You cannot see energy per se, but you can see its effect. Pretty much like force. Now, so if anything to, is to be done in the universe, you need work to do that. For example, uh, we need food energy to do our daily waking, sleeping. Yes, when you sleep, you need energy. And just like a car needs fuel to move and have the radio on. Even though we have forces, but also a big part of what should go on in a system or in an object to be able to work or do a job is pretty much have energy. Now, we have different types of energy, but one way to recognize how energy works is decide what is your main source or what is the main store of energy that you are using. Well, per definition, when you use a main source of energy to act out or to produce other types of energy, or for example, to apply force on an object, that source is called an energy store. Now, energy stores can change between uh, objects. For example, one energy store can start and then you have another energy store, but nonetheless, the starting point of energy is called an energy store. Now, for example, types of energy stores, the main type is, or one of the main types is chemical energy. Chemical energy is basically a chemical compound that we use to produce energy. For example, food is a chemical store for us. Uh, fuel is a chemical store for a car. And uh, coal is a chemical uh, store if you want to start a fire to uh, roast some meat. Now, to convert energy to other types of energy, it has to be changed. Uh, one simple change is a chemical reaction. Basically, when you change one compound to another, uh, most common one is basically burning or combustion. That's a way you change one type of energy store to another energy or another energy store if you need to do so. Now, Another type is gravitational potential energy. You already know from the previous chapter that gravity affects all objects on Earth. Well, that gives it a store of energy that can be used. For example, if you put an object on a high place and it falls, the distance that it was placed on give it some or give it some pull and uh, some pull force, which is basically. Uh, gravity force, that stores energy in objects so we can use it later. For example, if you put a hammer up, then release it down, the release down is basically a release of uh, the gravitational energy that was stored on it when it was pulled up. Also, when water moves down, the water fall, fall, that energy that the water used to move a mill, for example, is stored on it because of gravity working on it or acting on it. Elastic energy, well, when some objects change shape and go back to its original form, we call this an elastic object. Now, the energy that is stored when you change, for example, when you pull a rubber band 
or stretch it, then release it. This is called elastic energy. We can use it in many objects, but most famous object is the trampoline, which you use to jump on in an amusement park. Thermal energy is basically heat. Any object that gives you heat is basically a thermal energy store. One example is coal or a, a candle or even a heater, whether it be an electrical heater or a, um, any type of heater is basically. As long as it gives heat, we call it a thermal energy store. Now, how do we distinguish which is a good thermal energy store and which is not so good? or average or medium? Well, basically, the longer it keeps its heat, the better thermal energy store it is. Kinetic. Now, this is the energy of a moving object. Any object that moves has kinetic or kinetic energy. Now, the kinetic energy depends on how fast you move, for example, or how big you are when you move. Faster objects and bigger objects have more kinetic energy. However, when you stop, you don't have any kinetic energy anymore or any kind of kinetic energy store. It is basically uh, stored in another way or the energy of the object is stored in another way. Now, uh, one thing to remember is that friction force always work against the moving object and therefore reduces kinetic energy. So basically, energy and forces are pretty much linked together. One cannot exist without the other. Now, how can you use energy? Well, basically, you can use energy by converting one type into another. For example, when you eat an apple and move, that's converting chemical energy into moving or mechanical energy or kinetic energy. Uh, a battery also can be used to produce light energy. Uh, sunlight energy is used to be stored as chemical energy. And this, basically, the conversion of energy is very, very diverse, and it's not limited to one type of energy. However, the energy conversion depends really uh, on the question you are asked. For example, uh, if you're going to, for example, uh, move uh, or stop or... Basically, it depends on the example. Now, there are three, three main rules that you need to remember about energy. You cannot make energy. Absolutely, you cannot make any new types of energy. Whatever is there, is there. Done. And you cannot either destroy it. You cannot destroy energy. Energy is here, and it's not going anywhere. And the amount of energy in the universe is constant. It does not change. We don't know how much it is, but that's it. The universe energy amount is limited. Now, the only thing you can do with energy basically is convert it from one store into another or from one type into another, like in the previous example. Now, for example, you can change uh, uh, in a light bulb, you can change electrical energy store into light energy. And in radio, you can change it to sound energy and photosynthesis from light to chemical energy. Basically, you are unlimited in the types of energy con con transformation or conversion you can do. And when you ch and once an energy changed, it can be changed to under another form of energy as long as it is applied or it's used. And uh, it's never one type of energy. Like, for example, in light bulb, you have electrical energy turned into light energy. And if you touch a light bulb, it's heat, it's heat energy. So at any time, there is more than one energy transformation taking place. And this shows you, like, this one, this a diagram shows you that the conversion is basically very diverse. You can transform it into many, many sources as long as you are working the object. The end. Thank you very much.